Hey, it's Nori, the reporter, and we're doing something really special today. We are in the historic Anacostia neighborhood, home to Frederick Douglass. We're going to take a walking tour with a local historian, Mr. John Muller. I'm going to turn it over to him, and uh, we're going to get this tour started. My name is John Muller, author of Frederick Douglass in Washington, D.C., The Line of Anacostia. We will be going on a neighborhood walking tour of old Anacostia and following in the footsteps of Frederick Douglass and learning a little bit more about his active participation here as a resident of Anacostia. He essentially knew everyone in the neighborhood. He knew the local uh, school students. Now why would he know the local school students? Because Frederick Douglass' grandchildren uh, lived in and around this neighborhood. So Frederick Douglass' grandchildren were friends with neighborhood children. They would come to the Frederick Douglass house and they would kind of play baseball, and do all sorts of other sorts of activities that they did back in the 1800s. Frederick Douglass as a board member of Howard University would frequently have literary salons at Cedar Hill. He would invite students over and they would uh, recite Shakespeare, discuss politics, uh, maybe do a little musical recital. As you, some of you know, Frederick Douglass was a self-taught violinist. His grandson, Joseph Douglass, performed at the uh, White House for President McKinley and Taft. And Frederick Douglass and his grandson, Joseph, were known to uh, kind of perform duets at uh, gatherings at Cedar Hill. And usually there would be probably a young lady uh, accompanying them on the piano. Frederick Douglass was known to keep horses. He had a stable on his property. But he was uh, actually known as someone who... Uh, decide not to take an Uber or Lyft of his day. He was known to walk throughout the community. He would walk from his house at Cedar Hill across the Navy Yard Bridge, the Eastern Branch Bridge, down Pennsylvania Avenue, up 4th Street to his offices in the old City Hall building where he worked as Marshal of the District and uh, as Recorder of Deeds of the City. And so this horse tie is very interesting because it's a uh, kind of a physical remnant of a previous era before we had Model A's and Model T's or Tesla's and so uh, this is just kind of a uh, you know physical uh, symbol of a pre combustible engine era when our uh, our fuel was hay that we would feed to our horses so I think it's very nice that this is still here and uh, the Frederick Douglass house is just right around the corner so it kind of helps to get people into the uh, you know, maybe historic mindset of what it was like when Frederick Douglass was an active member of the community. We are currently uh, here with a young Douglassonian scholar, an honor roll DC Public School student, friends with Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, Mr. Tizea. Tizea has helped uh, facilitate neighborhood walking tours in recent years. He has become a young scholar and expert on Frederick Douglass and can speak more specifically about what Frederick Douglass means to him. When I first started um, learning about Frederick Douglass, we was doing tours and we was asking, and answering questions about things that we didn't know and wanted to know. He is basically an idol because of the things that he did for black people. And basically, since I live right here, it encourages me to be out more in the community and helping others. When Frederick Douglass was in the community, despite the fact that he was a very um, well-to-do gentleman, he was a fine Victorian, uh, you know, just a sophisticated fellow. He was a gentleman. And he was known to walk the community. Now when he walked the community, people were known to run up to him and say, Mr. Douglass, uh, you know, my, my son or daughter is uh, thinking about going to Howard University. Can you write them a recommendation? Mr. Douglas, we're having uh, an event at church on Sunday. Can you come and you know bless the food? All sorts of things. So Frederick Douglass walking his community, he was very he was very accessible. One of the more interesting little items is in 1884, the New York Tribune, which was a paper which had national syndication, had a little item that said Frederick Douglass, despite his age, walked around Washington as briskly as a boy. Now, so this was a compliment basically to say that Frederick Douglass, despite his advanced age, he was, he was in his late 60s at this time, that he was, very, uh, he was a very lively, effervescent, uh, you know, just active presence in the community. And it really speaks to the fact that Frederick Douglass, as some of you may know, during his anti-slavery days, discussed the hypocrisy of religion. Frederick Douglass famously said that 
His prayers to God were never answered when he prayed on his knees, that, but when he prayed on his feet, his prayers were answered. So I think Frederick Douglass was just someone who was kind of a little bit of a restless spirit and wanted to kind of get out and walk around his community and, and you know, kiss babies and shake hands, let's say. Today has been nothing short of amazing. A special thank you to Mr. John Muller, author of Frederick Douglass, The Lion of Anacostia book, uh, for taking us on this tour. He's appreciated. For more information, make sure you visit our website, www.newfredericdouglasbridge.com.